would like to introduce you to somebody who's very special to me, and I know probably just as special to you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lindsey Buckingham. Before I take off, uh, I, uh, I wanted to do one more song. This is written by one of the all-time great writers, and uh, we're going to bring a couple of people out here to help me with it, and uh, most notably, my very great and good longtime friend, Mr. Mick Fleetwood. Nick and I have been spending a lot of time together recently because Fleetwood Mac is uh, working on a studio album right now. And um, I think one of the things that happens is you first learn how to sort of be responsible and take care of yourself and then you can you know, take care of others and be responsible for them too. And that's what we're doing. We're learning how to do that again. Young punks how to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, area if you want or if you wanted to sort of wash out here. over the whole area then we're going to have the to put it on the mantle on the mantle maybe all right okay. how about that i'm going to take it from you okay it's been in my house in phoenix and it's such a lucky piece oh. that i thought you know well yeah, here. the bad news is i have had absolutely no rest really the good news is i wrote four songs and I, this morning, put them on a CD. So we really were, really trying to make these totally, it was totally about Fleetwood Mac. It was like, you guys weren't there, but you were there, in fact. 
What you don't realise, Steve, we've just spent the last six months trying not to be ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Really loud. Really loud. Okay. chemistry still be there without the all the other stuff you know and have something new to give back to the situation from having left it's it's great you know it's really been a lot of fun and this is a major thing for us because Lindsay's not been part of Fleetwood Mac as a studio player as part of the band for uh, I think over 15 years or something we did an album called Tango in the Night which was just insane. And then they wanted to go on the road, and the road is usually about ten times the craziness of what an album is. And uh, I just had to sort of pull back. So, you know, I spent a lot of time in my room, so to speak, in my studio, studying, just figuring some new weird shit out. About, about five years ago, Lindsay asked me to play on some stuff he'd been working on. A year and three months later, <laughs> we were still uh, in the studio. So now it came down to this point where we were getting essentially done with this solo record, and well, I said, Lindsay, you've been you've been inactive in you know the records and radio sort of community for probably six or seven years at that point. You'll be putting out a solo album, and we know that you'll be getting a certain kind of exposure, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a way maybe to actually make this thing be even bigger. And he was like, Well, what's that? And I said full seven camera reunion on a sound stage and show everybody the chemistry that still exists with this band. Everybody's going to feel the magic that's going to go on on that stage. And then it launched a giant tour. When we said goodbye after the tour, we always thought that we would get in the studio and do another album. Stevie was, has been into doing this for, for ages. A lot of the things that were kind of left unsaid and, and left unresolved between she and I when we were a couple have all sort of made their own way to, to, to being comfortable. Christine is over in England somewhere. Uh, just, she's not involved in this. Yeah, Christine's been a great asset to Fleetwood Mac. She deserves, like anyone else, to do what the hell she wants, you know. If we had thought there was any chance that she would come back, we would not, we would have waited for this, to do this record. I, th I think it, w it would be sad if, if she was here with the, same, with the same mindset that she has. There you go. Um, and rather wishing, wish you, wish you weren't here, babe. Yeah. Know? Wish I wasn't here. And everyone else knowing that, that would cast a terrible pall over this. So I called up Lindsay and said, I, I really need to write some new songs for this record, for my own soul. I, I don't want this to be all old material. So I started January 1st in Phoenix, and I wrote like a maniac. John 
Mick and myself have been here for about six months working on her songs. And the songs of mine really are pretty much complete and have been complete for a while because they were going to be a solo album. And uh, at the very end of this, probably when Stevie's stuff is in the can, we'll, we'll open up my songs and we'll get her singing on those and that will complete the entire picture of what this material will be. faceless Wall Street mentality and I just, you know, it gets harder and harder to be the kind of uh, spontaneous force that that, uh, that you like to be, you know, and uh, the periphery of people that, that tend to sort of get involved and sometimes uh, too involved, you know, in, in the creative process. I just think if we can see through all of that and, and navigate that whole thing and, and trust each other and, and believe that we, you know, in many ways are probably better at our craft than we've ever been, and I think we're, we're going to blow out of people's minds with this project. That's what I think. Amen. Well said. And the band played on. Yeah. Everything's going really good and, and this, this week is uh, certainly an important week that we, we have some business orientated stuff that's in truth very important uh, with settling where, where our record company and who they're going to be and stuff like that. Uh, not <laughs> a band needs a record company at some point, uh, I think, although sometimes I wonder. We were going to sign to to Interscope uh, as of maybe a month ago, and then at the eleventh hour, Warner's, which was the label that we had been signed to, uh, came in uh, with a uh, I shouldn't say necessarily a better offer, but a larger uh, advance offer. Very soon, uh, a couple of people from that company are going to come here and listen to what we have. You know, we'll wait and see how it goes. I, I wouldn't want to guess where we'll, where we'll end up. I don't know. I think that with those kind of people, I don't know that you can pay them five, play them five hours of music before they start to sink into the couch. The range of material that I have to offer certainly represents where this album could be seen in terms of style, if it's going to be a conservative album, if we're going to play it safe, if we're going to go out there and really redefine ourselves in the most credible way possible. I don't think it makes a lot of sense just to try to limit what he's hearing. Well, I would have only said that you might want to limit it only because this is the first time we've ever met. Well, let's see, let's see what happens. I mean, if he's coming over here wanting to hear music, and that's that's the basic premise. 
then we should play him music. That's his job. Don't bother me. I'm in the middle of meeting with artists, you pain in the ass. <laughs> I guess. How are you? Nice to see you. How are you? Mamma the ponytail? Yes, Mamma the ponytail. <laughs> Tom is running late. Oh, is Tom coming? I didn't know he was eating. That's great. I didn't know he, didn't he didn't tell me he was coming. Yeah, I didn't oh, know fantastic. he was eating. So. Oh, fantastic. But, great. but he wanted us to start, and then he'll show up, I think, oh, okay. in the morning. Uh, what are we doing today? Are, we, are you guys listening to stuff, or what, are we talking? Well, everybody, every, yes, We're, all of those things. We'd like you to get comfortable with the new Warner Brothers. I know that Tom's come here, and I know that Tom I, really Tom liked, and I got along great. Yeah, and Tom uh, really liked what he heard, so, yeah. which is why I think we're still here. Well, let's, why don't we just play my, the four demos. All right. Which, which is this? Down, maybe. So how you know how do you figure out what what makes it on the album? Yeah, because <clears throat> that's not going to be easy. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it's great, really good. Uh, yeah, we'll figure it. Out. Well, thank great. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys. good, yes, pleasure. Good. Thank you for coming. Go young take a little rest. Man.
The idea of this double CD has been floating around for quite a while and uh, has been kind of sidestepped, but it's really at a, at a point where we have to look at it squarely and figure out what we're doing. Uh, the managers, or at least two out of the three managers, are, are not for it, but I've kind of been put in the position of trying to, you know, maintain a sort of high level of of aspiration for this thing is you know it's a, it's self-serving too for me but I mean I just feel that that's an element that's going to show you know what what we have to offer now that maybe can't be shown on on just 12 songs you know because at first they're going to go for what they think is going to be radio or commercial songs and then what's left is going to be marginalized purely from a manager's point of view um I, th I don't think it's the right idea. I want the band to sell as many records as possible and be as prosperous as possible, and in order to do that, to do that I think it's best that it's a single record. Yes, uh, the other managers have a problem with the double album, but is the problem about the money or is it about the music? Mick initially was an ally with that idea. In fact, I would not have involved myself in this project at all at least with this group of songs, had I not thought Mick was going to be an ally in this. He, w he did a 180, so that was, that was something which he doesn't perceive as having been hurtful or even profound. And I think, you know, he sees it more like, well, you know, I, it's just because I forgot to call you. So I, I cannot say I have an ally in the band right now, no. We've been, been there and done that thing, and I, I understand what, what it is artistically. We've been I just, down, we've, we've, we've made, made a double album. I'm just fear, thing, fearful of, of, in my mind, what failure is. And failure, it, it's, it's all of the above. It means, means, you know, you can put it in money terms, but the failure of the project in terms of, of that would, for me, would be an awful thing. It would be. Look I mean, at filmmakers, you know, who, you know, who's a good example? Uh, there's so many of them. What's, what's the guy's name? Todd, is it Solens? What, uh, the, he's got storytelling out now. He's, you know, he's probably, he probably lives <coughs> in an apartment in West Pacoima or something. You know, he's never going to get rich off of what he's doing, but, you know, he's doing exactly what he wants to do. And he's proud of it, and he's c contributing to the culture of cinema no, I, in a I, way that, you know, uh, Ridley Scott is not, you know, and that's what it's where it's at. For the listeners of listeners, there's no doubt that this body of work is absolutely sustainable, because it is, and I understand that, and I believe it, the and I know it's true. Listeners. I'm just worried about that suffering to the extent where it never, it never has the legs to get out there. There was a point before I decided to do this where I would probably have been willing to put out what that was and if the right 300,000 people heard it, that would have been all that was important. The right ears heard it. It wasn't 3 million, it was 300,000. But I hate to see this thing get get chopped up right. into, into something that it, it's not meant to be, you know? So, at least from my perspective. Okay. I mean, if if it really came I, down to it, and, and I was like feeling like, go together, if, and I was feeling like all that they were gonna do was is, was pull, you know, all we were gonna do was pull, you know, generally speaking, the safest things out, well, and, and marginalize everything else. I'd be better off just, you know, taking the material that was gonna be my solo album and keeping three quarters of it for a solo album, you know. Uh, you know, and and, and uh, use right. a few of these things and and put you know give to this project in terms of con quantity or, or 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 type of contribution what what everyone seems to want right. to do, and and you know and maybe I will if we do that you know I mean I own the masters. His sitting there and saying I don't feel threatened by if it sells, you know, 500,000 copies, that he's going to feel okay about that. I don't believe that he actually will. I think he'll be devastated. When he sits there and says blah, 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 if you get into that thing, which is, which is appealing for, for certainly me to totally get into and start quoting 
a filmmaker who is living in a, a two-bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty challenging. It's like Lindsay, would you like to do that? And the answer is no. And the only reason he can say is is that he he's never going to be in a two-bedroom house. I've had this property for about 20 years, and it was a like a single-story post and beam house. And uh, oh, there we go. Daddy. <laughs> and uh, so, since we've uh, had a couple of kids, we thought we would uh, build a bigger house here. This is going to be uh, the studio, uh, where hopefully maybe Fleetwood Mac will cut its next album. We think all these people that are our age are going to just come out of the wall, wall and say, you know, oh, I'm just going to start buying music again. And in fact, they're not laying around on the floor smoking dope, thinking about what their next record they're going to buy is. They're trying to deal with delinquent children. They're trying to figure out how to pay the rent next month, or the, or you know, or the how to pay for their house, or how to put their kids through college, they are not the first thing on their mind. It's not, oh my God, I have to get Billboard and see what the number one record is. So we have to sell records to between, you know, 10 and 27 years old. That's kind of, the, that's kind of who buys records now. So they're not going to buy a double record. They're not going to get how deep it is and how serious and how multi-layered it is because it's music now, the music business is so fragmented and, you know, the very quick cuts on MTV and it's like everything is, you know, just so you don't even think, you know. They're not going to buy 20, 22 songs on a record from people that are in their 50s. It's just not going to happen. So personally, I, even if I really, really believed in a double record, would say, it's not good for my band. Everybody is nervous to say anything because yeah. nobody wants to rock the boat and nobody wants to hurt Lindsay's feelings. And we love Lindsay and we want him to have everything he wants and all his dreams to come true. But this is not about art. And I come back to Tom and I say, well, look, just on, again, on a hypothetical, if somehow the band had become unified and said that this was what they wanted to do, would that be a deal breaker for this whole thing? And he's, he said, and if it doesn't work out with them, would you? are you still thinking about going to Interscope? If what doesn't work out? Oh, you mean if the double CD thing? Uh -huh. No. People have families. You guys, I mean, I don't, but you guys do. You all have children, brand new families and houses that you're building. That's why we're looking at the numbers to see what it really means. I told them, look, I'll eat, you know, hundreds of thousands. You know, I'll eat a fuck of a lot of money to, to be able to put out something like what I want to put out. At least have it included in this group of two. Uh, it's just, of course it's just my opinion, but I am producing this, and I am engineering it, and I am here six days a week from about 10 till 7 at night, and I've got a lot invested in this. And I also, and if you haven't noticed, I am so thrilled to, I don't even want to, it just make me cry. Anyway. Just all of us doing this, seeing John's way, seeing you and me in moments the way we are able to be now. And all of the sort of making up for some of the mistakes that we made before and, and making things right in a different way. And if you don't think I that means the fuck of a lot to me, you're wrong. But it's all hangs together. Yes, uh, yeah, it's just my idea. It's my selfish idea. It's not selfish. It's, it's my ambitious idea.
back in the studio. Love to be there. <laughs> All those 150 replays of the same track. Loud. Wow. Does it go really fast? 55. be the two two middle lines and the little thrown down we can do those together or I can do those by myself and then I put a high falsetto harmony on the second thrown down I mean the answering part the answer part right. well actually this song it was written on the last Fleetwood Mac tour on the dance tour and it was really uh, in, in its own kind of strange way written about my relationship with Lindsay and how the barricades of time have always gotten in our way and you know some at some point in your life you start to write on these things philosophically and so Lindsay and I are like you know amazed that we can actually write stuff that that is about each other and was about each other and means something to us now and it's odd sitting here singing all this stuff about myself you know it's uh, you sort of learn to disassociate and to sort of be professional about it but you know it's uh, it's pretty amazing, you know, all this time later that there would still be those subjects being dealt with in, in, a, in a really deep manner. That he could be good for her That they should be together You say you're sorry now you should walk away But it's so overwhelming You have nothing left to say You can't sit outside his door and wait Well, you can dedicate your pain to him I like the last half of that especially. Well, I thought about the first verse, right? I thought if you put a couple of those things back into the the tense and the person, it might, I don't know, it just might make it run, make, it might actually strengthen the narrative from the first <laughs> to the second verse, that's all. When you say, now you're going home, who are you talking about? I'm talking to you. But I'm saying if you put that in the third person and in the past tense, it, it hangs with the first verse more. A decision yeah, no one made, he was, he was going home, you know? It sort well, of... then you'd say, have to say a now, because the now you're going home is so beautiful. It flows so beautifully. So you could say now he's going home. Or now or he's going... Okay. Or, but, or, you, but you can't change that because it's beautiful. I'm just saying that, you know, it's sort of a, a, a rule of thumb in writing that you don't shift your tense and, and your person. Well, I don't think that you could say that to Bob Dylan. Because he would say to you, I write what I want to. Okay. 
I just thought it was because it's not as abstract as what Bob Dylan would write in those situations. It's not a. It's a fairly literal. But it's the way I write. Narrative thing. No, I just thought it I might help. Okay. It's the way that I. The po it's the poet that I am. It's the way I, I write. I just want. I just couldn't not bring it up because I thought it might help the whole strength of, of the running and the continuity. I didn't think it was a good idea not to bring it up. I thought for a while there we weren't ever going to find a record label. We have a home and we've uh, ended up back at Reprise. I think this is the best thing because Warner's has our catalogue and, and a huge body of, of Fleetwood Mac work. So everyone's kissed and made up and uh, the new guys at Warner's I think are genuinely really exciting about, excited about what we're doing which is really a prime importance to us. So we're back at Reprise and we have a label. Wonders never cease. <laughs> you know, we there was a, a major, uh, I wouldn't say confrontation per se, but a, a major dialogue going on within members of the band and, and the managers <clears throat> and the record company about uh, an idea of putting out a double CD. The double album way back with me and Lindsay, I endorsed. I thought it was artistically a spunky, great idea. And we always said, hey, if it's not there, we won't do it. And then we rode on into the sunset. And then at some point down the road, quite frankly, upon speaking with people like Carl, uh, who I regard his opinion, said, this is a very risky thing to do. Lindsay's answer to that would be, you change your mind, how can you do that, you know? And to me it was just like, well, it's just a different angle, a different way of looking at it, and are we doing the right thing, you know? And so the happy thing is that I think the body of work will truly live and breathe as uh, a double album. I think it's important to say that uh, the traitor's feeling okay about <laughs> about doing this, you know. So it's going to be a huge bargain, as far as I'm concerned, of a whole lot of music for a, you know, a price that's really being kept down. It was really just up to me to take the hit in terms of a certain amount of royalties because you only get paid up to 12 songs. So if we were to have 20, you know, <laughs> Uh, I would only get paid on maybe two or three. You know, everyone was extremely surprised that I'd be willing to do that, and were kind of uh, in shock that anyone would be that stupid. <laughs> we are also in the process of choosing who's going to mix this. There's uh, one or two, possibly three people that are uh, in the running right now. Initially, you know, we were going to do a more symmetrical thing where she would take one song of hers and give it to Mark. I would take one song of mine and give it to Chris Lord Algy, who is the guy that she wanted to use. But we're just doing the best we can to get an indication and make a decision based on some level of intelligence, you know. So how much is this going to cost me? I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, Good. six. Six, nine, um, nine grand divided by four, whatever that is. That's too much. All right. We just won't mix your bass parts in. Boy, it's done that for years, hasn't it? <laughs> All right. Whoever mixes this record, it will be a life-changing experience for them. 
you know? Oh, I'll say. Don't you think? I mean, it's like, it's like they'll never be the same. So it's a very, it's a really big deal. I just wish that we, you know, yes. had more choices. Well, yeah, I guess. It almost seems like we have too many already in a way. I mean, just if, if this is the process we're going to go through. Right. Maybe we should have your guy mix like two of my songs that are Ooh, yeah, that are okay. well oh well, yeah I mean seriously like two songs different ones two songs that are like really different and if I like it then we can go with your guy just do that and nothing else and not and nothing else at the end of working on one song at, you know at the most two songs I'm going to at least be able to go well you know what I could deal with this guy you know he's fine oh well, you love him Oh, uh, get mo. <laughs> oh, not me. Get mo. Hey, man. How you doing, Les? I'm well, man. All right. Good, good to, to see you. Good to see you. All right. You good? You good. Pretty good. You? You good? Are you done? Yeah, we are. Really? Up to the song, right, man? All right. Well, we're we'll here. We're here, baby. Come take a listen. So, just a little, little uh, tidbit. When I came in, not that long ago, an hour maybe. Um, he played me back the mix, and it was terrific. I made a few, a couple of little suggestions, and uh, so now it's time for you to just like rip into it. Come Here, on. I'll play No, that guitar, I need to get a little bit of that louder, that dead one that comes. I'd use that uh, one. But yeah, that's, that's very pretty cool. And then the, the way you're using the dee 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 dee, just with the together, that's a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. I thought they worked kind of well. You know, I was trying to find places to put that, but I thought that worked pretty well just there. That's you great. Know. No, that's perfect. Well, that was good. The song could go home and everyone could come back feeling differently about it, I suppose, but I, I feel like he just instinctively did a very interesting thing. That bodes very well, I would say. And it doesn't sound like all these other guys. I'm, I'm totally psyched. It's like, I don't think it's bad. At all. I don't think it's bad. I think there's a lot of parts about it that are really good. I said it it just doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy, you know. It doesn't, you know, like, I love my songs, you know. I love all the little words and the little, you know, I do. I'm totally, I admit it, you know. And it's like when my words coming back to me don't make me feel like I felt when I was sitting at the piano by myself, singing those words to nobody, then I don't, I don't care about the song anymore. I just think maybe, we, I mean, what we already said, maybe we need something to compare to so that we can understand. Anyway, um, let's, let's, let's go through the thing with Chris and, and see what happens. There's, okay. there's no harm in doing that. Because Chris is so in demand and because he is so busy all the time his his thing is you know I come in at noon and I've got the song up and mixed by four and what's next you know I, I think in this case it's this is a decision that's really up to Stevie I can say something about it to her but it's really up to her about uh, whether she, she wants to go the full distance with uh, with Chris on her songs and my feeling is that she will want to It's been going on all week long last week. All What's been going on? They just wanted the deal memo to be signed all last week. They started trying to do this last Monday. 
it's it's she's told it's true. It's, it's I understand, just, you know. but but they had things they, they wanted things from me that I couldn't give them. Like, well, what are the what are the, the twenty tracks that are going to be on this? I'm not even sure I'm going to use Chris. What are the ten tracks of yours that we're going to be mixing? I'm not going to tell them that because I don't know. Well, Nobody's just saying it's anybody's fault, but if it, it it happened, it happened. If we lost the day, we lost the day. But Stevie's we, attorneys have not been involved in this until today, Lindsay, because it's the producers. Were, yes, but they, the they, they I, I can't the give you the finer points. All I know is that they've been asking for things for me that I was not prepared to give, nor should they have been asking for it. It's not. It's not relevant to what we're doing at well, this point. Well, I mean, on one I have hand... Not, this is not about the whole album yet. This is about me giving them one of... Okay, well, this, but it does track. look like it. It is it's, it's about I Lost Tomorrow to but Vince Monica. It, so I it, mean, it's, it's totally about me now. I don't know what to, to do about this, but maybe you should go and call Chris Lord Algy and see if there's any... Or has tomorrow already been booked? Well, why don't you call Tony and have that conversation with him, and then you and Tony can figure out what to do to get tomorrow back. Okay. You want Tony's number? Yes. Here, I'll dial it right now. What did I just do with the phone? All right. All right. Hi, it's Lindsay. Is Tony around? Hello. Well, the people over here are pointing fingers at us. So oh, we are not, Lindsay. Why are you maybe. saying that? Ugh. Jesus Christ. I was just trying to say it's nobody's fault. And, and Karen is telling me that your lawyers only got involved today. With the implication Karen, of which okay. is that my people fucked up. Karen is drop dead honest. You know that. Drop dead honest. Karen is drop dead honest. You know that. I'm telling you what you're... you're Okay, yes, but if it's you your guy's fault, that is what she is saying. But when you pick it up with Tony now, and then you do the same thing she just did. Well, I'm, I'm letting the two yeah, people who are pointing fingers sort it out for themselves. No, no. So, what do you Let them find it out. But you know, God, why shouldn't this be a little bit hard? It's, it's all fear and, and, and suppression uh, of instinct and suppression of... of uh, impulse and, and spontaneity, you know. I'm not saying that part of it isn't because I feel I have a lot to offer and I should feel good about it. And, you know, any shrink would tell you that's a good thing. If you can do something for, help a group of people and do something good for a situation and help yourself, that's where it's at, you know. I don't feel bad about that. But, you know, we're going to put out something that is extraordinary. You know, Howard came back with some incredible numbers for us for our tour, you know. We're going to have a hell of a four or five year run here, you know, if we, but we can't just sort of do it by saying, hey, everything's cool or whatever. You no, know? I completely agree. And that's, that's one reason it's hard, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's hard. I, if I'm the one who's going to be perceived as the troublemaker, so be it. It's, why should it be any different now? <laughs> 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 Okay. Oh, it's going to stand with everything. That's so great. All right, now this is, we're going to inject some humor into the recording of this record. <laughs> Hopefully, all we can do is work out our differences. You know, it's like I'm not mad at Lindsay today. I don't think he's mad at me today. Um, we're okay. Hopefully, we don't have that final fight that is so bad that we can't walk back in this house. No matter what happens, if Lindsay and I blow up into a mass of, you know, exploding timbers, the fact is the record will be done. And then if we're dead, people at least have the record to enjoy and the music will live on. And that's, you know, really, I guess, what's most important. I felt bad for him, so I started lugging all the stuff down, sweating buckets, trying to seat for him. Welcome, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. It's not going to work. What are you doing, man? So Everything's I drew it for you. Oh, man. It's a midnight blade. She's done it a thousand times. Starts out in the darkness. I mean, that might be.
be a little too skeletal, but do that's want a nice idea. No, but not, I don't know. Is it's it, not so radical well, that it doesn't well, work. Well, it's but well, how do make how do we make that idea better? Well, let's that, get right off the bat. How do we? How do we make how that, we idea, make that better? idea more refined? Yes. You take it out like you did for the first half and then bring it in like at a lower level for the second half and then in or something like that. Well, it just seems like let it let but it Maybe it shouldn't through. be on the, maybe if you're going to do that, maybe the on the intro, on uh -huh. the four, uh, the, maybe it should be kind of more down for the intro because it almost sounds like, it, there it's real loud and then it just drops out and that sounds like John just fell off the stage or something. <laughs> We're on an excitement vacation today. Have the whole band here tomorrow, so it could be uh, a recap of last week with Chris, Lord Algae. I think they need to discuss um, everyone's individual opinions on the mix and if we're going to uh, pursue any more mixes with Chris. Lindsay, this is what I think. This record is going to take two to three months to mix, and Chris Lord Algae doesn't have that kind of time, so we should just go back to using Mark Needham, I think. Her comfort level was to, to try to get this thing done with, with Chris. So we went in, you know, we did one song of hers with Mark, and that, was, that had sort of unclear results, I would say. And then we did a, a four or five days with, with Chris on Stevie's songs and one on my uh, one of my songs. It seems to have come out the other end, really, that just that that uh, he's not the guy. And uh, so I think we're we're going to start up again with Mark. Was I the one? I I think this is the best stuff, songs that she's written in a long, long time. In fact, since uh, the first couple of albums we did with, with Stevie and Lindsay, and that's pretty scary. I, and she got, I think she made, made mention of it, she, she realized that Lindsay was pushing. And when she came back at Christmas, there was a reason she brought those songs in, and she knew 
but she wanted to be part of this in a way that was fresh and, and meaningful to her. Not that anything she does isn't meaningful, but as a writer, invariably, when they feel good about something they've just written, that's the shit, you know? And she has that feeling now. As a very final thing, we will finally put up some of my songs and um, get Stevie's presence on some of those. And that will be it. Then we will be officially done with this house. Uh, is it 16? It is 16. All right, there. Okay, now, I'm, uh, can, what do you think? Am I just... I like it. Don't think about it. We'll do uh, as many tracks as you want until you get tired, and then we'll make something wonderful out of it later. Start with that, right? I am. Or are you gonna do? You gonna do the lower one? Just whatever comes out. I am waiting. waiting. I am waiting. Oh yeah. Oh, Maybe I can figure out something cool for oh yeah yeah. Then you don't have to sing the oh yes. Okay. Okay, that's right. Um, I am waiting. I am waiting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Waiting for someone to come out of somewhere Waiting for someone to come out of somewhere You can't hold out, you can't hold out Oh yeah, oh yeah You can't hold out, you can't hold out You know, I'm not privy to the, oh, where the, the writers want the songs to go. I can do, I, I do my bass parts as far as I can see the, the, the picture. And after that, it's, it's really, it's, then it's back in the writer's court and after that it's it's a repeat 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 and that's where I get bored completely bored because I don't I, I, I don't have I'm not privy to their concept so I'd rather be anywhere else but sitting in the same room bless their hearts it's not personal it's business <laughs> Listening to the same bloody thing going over and over two thousand times a day. John, you've been brutal on yourself. No, and I, I can't see it. It, it. it drives me to distraction. Unless you're working. I, I, I'm playing, and and it's always been that way. I, I've, I I wish it could be more. I wish I could be more of a mm -hmm. input into the. Mm. 
the, the product, but I can't see into people's heads. I want to say something. Uh, you've said it. enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. Well, you should be in the you've been, Senate. You've been, you've, been, you've been more present <laughs> on this project. On. You've been more present on this project than any other project. Well, I was project. just going to say that. That was my wind-up bit. Good, good. <laughs> Christ almighty. You're so hard on yourself. Anyway, I was good. That was the end of it. Thanks, man. This is, uh, this is it, we just cleaned out. It's uh, basically an, an empty room with a lot of stories to tell. But I think it's been a great success. And onward and upward. album uh, is finally done and uh, it's called Say You Will. It was a double CD. It is now a single album. 
in the last uh, the eleventh hour, so to speak, there was uh, a really strong difference of opinion uh, about the running order, which which led to uh, I would say really an aggressive uh, fight about what was going to be real and what was going to be there and kept, which really led to a, a, a rethinking of some things, you know, somewhat sadly at that point, about the fact that we uh, were looking at a tour that, that maybe was going to be really cut back and indeed all of the, uh, the joy of looking forward to ever making another album had pretty much gone out the window. The only reason that I was willing to eat the kind of money that would have made it, uh, to eat, eat the kind of money that would have made the double album possible in terms of bringing the price down, uh, I had to contemplate a scenario which would have been to do much more touring, to do another album, and to, to do more touring after that. Now, if in, if there's any chance even that Stevie were to have pulled out after 40 dates, I couldn't take the chance and do that because you know I've got a family I have a new house to pay for so uh, it was really my call to pull it back into being a single album not the irony but the really positive part about it had Lindsay not pushed for a sing uh, double album all, all that time ago and seen the vision of a double album we wouldn't have 18 tracks different every song even though it's the same song it's it's different every night and you get that feedback and there's that link between the band members and the audience and it's that instant spark that's that's the whole deal that's the real deal we're the most together we've ever been I think let's just let's get it on
there is a voice that is not singing to me. Can we sample some lead vocals now and then and just sort of... <laughs> this is, I was thinking about this for Come, you know. Keep it in the original key and then it goes up to... And... Buddy else is just having... Mike Dean and... Buddy else is doing it. Can you drop that down to a... To a like drop it down to the low harmony of that, which still won't even be low? Well, I'll figure something out. Because we just haven't had a chance to rehearse lately. I, Right. Well, if we could finish this, we could start to set now. <laughs> Dude, are we going to have any rehearsal time tomorrow? I think we ought to go through the set tonight. I do. I'm, you know, I'm sorry that we, I know that everything, you know, that you're moving into your new house and that all this is happening. And, you know, no matter what we're doing, we're going to have to start being a little bit more organized, you know, because otherwise we're not going to get through this set very many more times. Well, I need a rest. You know, and I, I can't stay here till, till 10 o'clock or 9.30. All right, then let's just let's just keep going. Let's do half of the set, and then we'll call it. Let's get to when we leave from New York. Love and get there. I'll try to and sing the first verse. We're all going to try to do some kind of a harmony on the. Remember the world turning. Everybody's got me down. It's going, it's going well, you know. I mean, we only have like nine more days. We leave the 4th of May. So we're on our way. I mean, this is it. This is the final countdown. So it's great. I mean, I think that we're ready to go now. If we get out there and we're just having a great time, then for goodness sake, we could go on forever doing this. Who knows? Let's just say a prayer and hope that it just goes on forever. How are you feeling? My God. My God. <laughs> That's what we want. I gotta get, I'll be right back. I gotta get some. Johnny, what are you doing? That was a little more. Yeah, sailor. <laughs> well, Johnny, what? eyes down for, us. for a full house. Or thereabouts. We ready? Yes. Okay, where's Lindsay? Johnny. Not yet. I know where I stand. I know where you stand. That's why I love and you. And when I fucking look at you and smile, You fucking look at me back. You smile maybe, back. maybe. Fucking right. <laughs> Alright, this is us. Over here. You guys? You guys, hit with a great show. Back us up, Carlos. Here we Great. go. Here back we us go. Up. Back there, us up. Baby. Don't you worry. We got our breath. Our back. We got your back. We got your back. We're all set. Here we go. Here we go. 